Hello, and welcome to a Hearts of Iron 4 video showcasing the most amazing parts of the game, like achievements. Nobody has ever uttered that sentence in human history before. Okay, but in all seriousness, I do really enjoy my Hearts of Iron 4 achievements, but there are a few stinkers out there that aren't exactly very fun to do. A lot of the more mundane ones that are just you sitting around for the majority of the game, not really getting much done, or the ones that rely on a bit too much RNG are probably probably my least favorite to get done in Hoi 4. And as a person who is currently sitting on 49 out of 171 achievements in Hoi 4, I've left a few to the, uh, let's just say, later parts of this ongoing series that aren't going to be very fun. But today's one isn't going to be very fun. Okay, maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on the British Raj, okay? It came out a long time ago with this focus tree and Together for Victory, and I have to say, they're not very good. Yeah, for one of the first DLCs that came out in Hoi 4, the Together for Victory focus trees are definitely rather lacking. Uh, except the Canadian one. The Canadian one is just weirdly overpowered. And I like it. Yeah, but New Zealand, South Africa, India, Australia, they're just, yeah, I'm not a big fan. Never have been a big fan, even when they came out. But... I'm hoping today to change my mind on the Indian tree. Mostly down to the fact because I'm going to be here for a while, as today's achievements include me developing a nuclear bomb and dropping one, uh, and also becoming the spy master for the allies, but that is going to be easy peasy. All right, so there are a few good things about India. One is we do have the potential for a pretty large industrial base. The only problem with that though is that we are a colony and not a dominion, like the rest of our subjects under the British. This means our pesky, horrendous overlord is siphoning my money. On top of that is we'll also be on the forefront of the Japanese invasion over here if they do manage to capitulate China, which they haven't been really able to do recently because Paradox balked the AI. And you know what? I'm, I'm not complaining, Japan. You keep running headfirst into the Chinese endless waves of death. That's, that's fine with me. I, I say that, but they're about to do their one game where they actually destroy China. Yeah, let's let's fast forward to that, shall we? All right. So we, like I've said, we do have a good industrial base. Got a few more civilians, just because I'm assuming somebody is trading with us, which is all good. I will take them all, and I will make India the superpower it deserves to be. Maybe. You can definitely tell this focus tree is pretty dated when you just like click on one of these 70 day focuses and you get one military factory. Oh <laughs> uh, yes, integrate the princely railway 70 days to get a <laughs> level 1 railway from Bombay to Madras. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go up to uh, free trade for a while just because we have a lot to research and be a lot, I mean nuke. And uh, it's also not like I really need my resources anyway. Um, I'm building 14 guns. Yeah, I'd much prefer the uh, construction speed and extra research speed. We're already up to 17% as well. Pretty nice. All right, now we also can't get Spy Master until I think, yeah, we need to be free. So eventually we will get around to that. Maybe I'll have some fun with spies because I don't know what else I'm going to do as India other than wait for the bomb. So yeah, India does get, I think, one of the best modifiers for getting nukes other than maybe the vanilla tree. I can't remember. I haven't seen it in a while. But I think this is definitely the best one, which is a 300 research bonus for nuclear technology, which means if we do it just right, we should have nuclear bombs uh, pretty early. Air quotations. All right, it's been enough that we can now go ahead and do the major part of our tree, which is the provincial elections over here. Now, to get the achievement, we do need to stay with the British and do the quit India movement. So we can't actually go over here and actually have fun, I guess. Although, I think I did read that Paradox changed a lot of the stuff over here recently, that you can actually now get decisions to fix your agrarian society modifier, but uh, it, again, does not matter. I don't need the manpower. I only expect to use bombs. So yeah, we need to get the Quit India Movement to get our achievement, but if we don't um, and go over here and leave the Allies, we can't get the Spy Master one. So we will be sticking with the Allies and being a wonderful little subject, but eventually, 
you're going to have to go home, Britain. Uh, I don't know why. I never, ever do this stuff, but I think I'm going to go <laughs> and start trying to steal some of Germany's tech. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how well this is going to go. I can't remember the last time I actually used blueprint stealing, but, you know, I'm going to need an Air Force later, so maybe Germany can teach me a thing or two. Oh, there you go. It went through, and we have gained a bonus for the following heavy aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> I do need to build a <laughs> bomber, I guess. Good news, everyone. I've got a new operative to my side. It's Hannah Muller, the German old grandma that has chosen the Indian side. Right, operative Muller, you need to go into Germany with my other nondescript spies that will definitely fit into 1930s Germany and steal me some industrial blueprints. Hopefully, you all come back alive. Uh, things look like they're going all right in China so far. Japan's struggling against the river quite hard, but I'm gonna get an attache over there ASAP as well for China, just so I can get some uh, more experience going. Oh, uh, <laughs> they brought me back fuel refining too. Did I even have fuel refining? Apparently I did. You know what? This is actually, uh, this ain't too bad. I think I'm just gonna keep doing this while I wait for something interesting to happen in India. Uh, it is a bit annoying, so I have to get my spy network all the way back up, because I just do not have another spy at all to keep it going over there. Um, so it does take a little bit longer to do, but also we're now at war, so I start getting my autonomy up by sending the British convoys. My industry is going, and I also took a detour just to build a whole bunch of dockyards as well, because that's how I'm going to get my autonomy up and get my freedom from Mr. Churchill. Uh, but I could have spent that making even more civs, and uh, yeah, we are <laughs> we are having fun, not even up the war economy. There you go, we have become the Dominion of India, and we're already uh, getting our autonomy lowered. That's absolutely wonderful. But that does mean I can become the new spy... <laughs> oh my god, there's the first achievement, and a a lot more spies that I can now steal more stuff from the Germans with. Alright, the British are now at war with the Japanese, which means I'm at war with the Japanese, and so far looks like they're not gonna really make any progress. Uh, I'm not gonna advance over there, because my army sucks. Uh, just gonna hope that uh, Siam doesn't join though. So after sitting around not doing a lot, we are about to get our final nuke bonus and get ourselves nuclear bombs, which, you know, well, let's see, how long will it take us to get the 487 days don't don't mind if I do. And uh, we're also going to go ahead and get ourselves free in 50 more political power. And we've also done it without taking two nation theory. So we should keep Pakistan and uh, Bangladesh and Burma and all of that good stuff when I get free. I hope. Because I'd rather not lose them. There you go. Oh, we also got an achievement. Cut the strings. I didn't even know that was one. And now all we need to do is use our nuclear bomb. And by the way, that achievement was just for breaking free as a puppet. Uh, it's not an Indian specific one, which is why I probably wasn't paying attention to it. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to have to deal with the Civil War. Uh... <laughs> Oopsie daisy. All right. So just in case things start breaking free. I don't know if they can while we're at war. I'm sure they probably... Can. I'm making a, a little rapid response force over here just to go. Uh, I can't really take any units off these fronts because uh, Siam did join the Japanese side. So yeah, I'm not going to risk that one. Oh great, my units, my wonderful, wonderful spies have come back with the amphibious drive. <laughs> um, I guess just for comparison, this is what my tank research currently looks like. <laughs> I can only imagine our Indian units coming back. <laughs> just be like, we found a propeller! Ah, so this is what I was talking about earlier, where you can go ahead and get rid of your agrarian society modifier. This is what they added uh, when they updated the India tree a while back. So now that I'm actually building up infrastructure, you can then click this button and industrialize the province, which will give you a recruitable population factor bonus. And if you do one of these right here, you can even get yourself one extra building slot in the uh, zone, which doesn't seem that good at all. Or you can get workforce integration, which gives a local available resources 15% and construction speed in that province. And considering I don't think I've even filled out, no, I haven't filled out any of my slots yet, I might as well just go for the build speed. Okay, here we go. The Indian Civil War. Pakistan has broken free, and I will bring them back. Uh, yeah, my units aren't too good, but I think they spawn in with just the, the crappy militia, so my, my temple 
place should be more than enough by the looks of things. You know, I haven't had much time to build up an army when I'm rushing nuclear bombs. Burma just like breaks free and then gets pieced out the wall, which I'm not too fussed about. I didn't build in Burma for a reason, and it kind of like puts us off the uh, the Japanese war path there. But uh, I will have to take out Pakistan, of course. Um, although maybe you should uh, <laughs> change this <laughs> paradox. Well, I guess it's kind of weird to think that the Japanese would be like, all right. Pack it up, boys. We're going home. Burma said they're not playing anymore. And there goes Pakistan. Although, uh, some of the Axis has turned up through Iran because the Soviets declared war on them and they joined the Axis. Thank you very much, Soviet Union. Uh, how exactly the Romanians actually managed to get here unscathed, uh, considering how much allied waters they had to go through is very interesting. Yeah. I don't think those Romanians are, uh, happy <laughs> that they came to fight in India now. Oh! Perfect. I'm just really glad the Soviets, uh, you know, did did a lot to support me in that war that they started. You can really tell how much of an influence they had by these two states that they own. So now that we have nuclear bombs, we just need to build something to drop them and also uh, build the nuclear bombs. And we are ready to get an achievement. It does kind of make up for losing Burma by replacing it with Iran. So I'm not complaining. You know, Paradox, it would still be kind of nice to be given the option to keep them, you know? Just, you know, maybe just, you know, I'm asking too much, am I? I mean, who am I to ask, all right? You thousands of hours in this game, all the money and DLC bought. <laughs> just, I'm in the wrong. Please, Paradox. <laughs> Please. <laughs> all right, I'm not too sure what to do with my army now. I guess we could help our allied friends, but realistically, I just, I just want to drop a bomb, and I do have a bomb, and I do have some fighters now, so if we get ourselves somewhere to bomb... Yeah, I just realized I've just got, like, so many guys uh, with not a lot to do that I should, <laughs> I'm just going to start messing around. Uh, I don't need any tech anymore. <laughs> I don't think they've ever really given me anything good anyway, so... Uh, uh, let's just uh, start boosting some pop popularity in people. All right, let's see how many of you guys actually survive standing in the middle of Berlin, <laughs> shouting about how great democracy is. Oh yeah, they're uh, they're, they're not lasting too quickly. You know, actually, I think we could try and do like the Warsaw Uprising. I don't remember ever actually doing that. I mean, I'm gonna have to wait around anyway until I build some fighters to get supremacy because all the uh, allied ones right now are just all over. The the damn place. I could drop a nuke on Italy right now, actually. Where are my bombers? <laughs> Goodbye, Rome! <laughs> There's the achievement! <laughs> there you go, so uh, take out their planes for you, UK. Well, <laughs> you're welcome. Again, the most useful thing to do with your nukes is to always just blow up the enemy's planes. You've got, <laughs> got quite a few German ones right here, but if I drop this mystical bomb, they don't exist anymore. So yeah, just keep your uh, your intel high enough so you can spot them, and then just drop a bomb on them, and your your, your AI spam of air will go away quickly. So it means you could just uh, drop more nukes everywhere, because they'll just have even less planes for air supremacy. Kind of sad that dropping nukes and destroying the entire German air force doesn't really equate to uh, much war participation. Apparently, sitting at two right here. Does that? Add anything to the... N no, no war participation from dropping a nuclear bomb on Berlin. Come on, I'm being a team player! <laughs> I guess not as much as Turkey's being a team player. Uh, I can't remember how you actually get the uh, Warsaw Uprising to happen. Uh, I mean, I've got Warsaw up to 100% resistance, but I'm assuming I might need a couple more states for it to go up. Um, but I don't know if they're going to capitulate by the time that happens. Go. Does this help? No. Nukes, and a lot to do with them, so we're gonna help the allies out a little bit. I've just kind of been tapped out for the longest time, just uh, trying to get this Warsaw Uprising to fire, and uh, I've done quite a few resistance <laughs> boosting operations, and they still haven't popped off, which is... 
<laughs> Wonderful. Uh, in the meantime, though, the Allies have gone to war with the Soviets. I'm assuming through Turkey, because Turkey is usually the one that declares on them. Uh, I haven't pushed for anything. I'm pretty sure I could mop up the entirety of Germany right now with my nukes and my, uh, my strongest warriors over here, but I'm just really trying to get this thing to pop. Uh, Alright, okay, yeah, the Germans are just losing all the land I'm boosting in over there now, so we're just gonna go ahead and end this once and for all. That took me about two seconds uh, uh, and a, a few nuclear bombs that you can still see. Uh, yeah, unsurprisingly, I did not get anything, and, uh, oh, I think I... I think I missed something up here. <laughs> Good news is, so I did steal the Bismarck and the Tirpitz from the Germans, so who's the real winner here? <laughs> uh, kind of surprised Japan hasn't uh, clocked on to why a whole bunch of non-Japanese people just turned up and started preaching democracy in their capital. Uh, I mean, they literally haven't caught a single one of them either, so... <laughs> uh, so I'm not really playing at this point. I've just been AFK, but the AI still hasn't done much. Oh, I, I did push them out of India with the power of nuclear bombs. Uh, yeah, but the AI, I think, is just uh, busy grinding over in the Soviet Union, so I guess I will have to be the one to put this to bed. Uh, as soon as I get naval supremacy, which is proving difficult. Uh, yeah, all the uh, spies I did have, by the way, they all got killed. But I've recruited a brand new selection of people, and one of them's already in prison. Oops. Oh! Looks like they, uh, finally got around to beating the Soviet. Why did Turkey just take the Baltic? <laughs> Alright. Will the AI now come destroy Japan? Because I cannot get naval supremacy at all. Oh, there you go. They finally decided to put their navy out and support me. Um, not sure why you could have done that beforehand, though. I believe she had no strategy this entire game. Other than when I see a red arrow that I cannot break, I drop a nuke on it and then push. And then suddenly, it's green. It's, uh... It's one hell of a strategy. You know, even though I pretty much carried that entire war, still couldn't get all of China. But I did get a whole bunch of it. In fact, my name is just <laughs> over China now. Hey, but the real prize is that I did go ahead and steal the Yam- Oh, <laughs> it sunk quite a few British <laughs> Okay, the Yamato's been busy. <laughs> uh, I, I never actually realized they kept the history from when you don't even know. Oh my god, okay, the Bismarck just sunk a whole bunch of the Canadian Navy. We got a British ship, a whole bunch of Russians, <laughs> and a Mexican destroyer. Well, I would say that was a interesting game, but realistically, I was 100% tapped out for about 75% of that game. Uh, I just realized as well, why do they still... <laughs> the, the AI fought to not let me have this land, so they just let the Japanese <laughs> keep it as a puppet. Uh, just, why? Why? Why is the AI like this? They would prefer that the Japanese get to keep it than me. Okay, whatever. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe button down below for more. Hearts of Iron 4 a cheese months.